respond to your cry if it's a cry of faith. Word of God comes to release faith in you. The things that God wants to do in your life so you can be a witness and a living testimony. I'm reading about the mighty wonders in the Bible. How come we don't see them today? If they're in the Bible, that means our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Are we streaming so I can talk to the people watching? Thank you. Now, maybe you're watching by television. There is no distance in the spirit. If you're in a wheelchair, you're going to come out of that wheelchair. If you have a cancer, it's going to drop off you right now. In the name of Jesus. Why? Because I don't serve a dead God. I serve a living God. There is no distance in the spirit. Somebody say hallelujah. The Bible says that this is not my book. I never wrote it. It was written by God himself. It says, and the Lord shall supply all my need. According to his riches in what? It never said according to his riches in Bank of America. It never said according to the riches in the tax returns you file. It never said according to the riches in your mama's inheritance. Ever said there is wealth in the glory that I need to withdraw. Now some of you have never even withdrawn from the glory. Some of you have just learned to do that recently. You just learned to do that. It was a God who supply my need according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Ever said the glory of God is loaded with wealth. I'm about to surprise some people as I withdraw my blessing. Some will say hallelujah. Look at three persons and say hello. I know we are friends, but Jesus is not your uncle. So don't get jealous when he blesses me. Now I want to teach you from the scripture how to walk in this dimension. Because if you learn from the scripture, then you will not have anybody come and talk you out of it. Because ignorance is the devil's best weapon. Keep people ignorant. That way you can kick them whenever you want to kick them. Now, do you realize that in the realm of God's glory, there is unstoppable worship. Everybody said, worship will never cease. Because his glory is present. So worship has to continue. So worship is not just singing. But it's declaration of who he is. So we live a lifestyle of worship. In honor of him. Somebody say amen. As God blessed you. It is for his glory. As God given you a promotion. It's for his glory. Has God increased you in any way. It is for what? His glory. Worship is the lifestyle we live. So you have to start living a lifestyle of worship. In worship, there is no murmuring and complaining. Replace murmuring, with, murmuring and complaining with praise. Out of the lips of babes, God has ordained what? Praise. Hallelujah. Let praise continue in my mouth. Somebody say amen. In my heart. It has to continue 24-7. The Bible says pray without ceasing. These are things that can only manifest when you are in the spiritual realm. Somebody say amen. Walk in the spirit and you will not gratify the flesh. Because the flesh is separated from God. To be carnally minded is to die. When you are carnally minded you are dead. There is a lot of believers that are dead. They are separated from God. Because they think like the world, talk like the world. And they put limits on God like the world. That's all they do. Because they are raised up to think that God thinks like the world. God doesn't think like the world. Somebody say hallelujah. God thinks differently. God does things what? Differently. I was invited into a hospital to pray for somebody dying of cancer. I shared this testimony before I'm going to share it again. The hospital told her that we're going to, it was JFK Hospital. They don't play. 
That's why we're going to discharge you because and release you because you don't have insurance. You're critical, you're cancer. Go home, die. She was crying, so we showed up in the hospital. When I walked in, the boldness came upon me. And I rebuked the cancer, and the cancer left. Right there, someone say, Amen. She began to smile. And favor came upon her from God. The hospital was shocked at everything that was going on. They told her, we're going to keep you a little bit longer. And we're not going to charge you anything. And when they released her, they could not find the cancer because God took it out. Somebody say hallelujah. That is the God I'm talking about. That he can change your situation spontaneously. If you call him. Cancer is a killer. God took it out. Because he's a mighty God. This is why Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it, as it is in what? In heaven. When we're in the glory zone, we are in the heavenly realm. So we have to know how to discern and reverence him and fellowship with him. So I could be talking to God while I'm talking to you, but I'm communing with God. Why? Because I'm not using the physical ear. No, I'm tuning into the spirit by following him. The footsteps of a righteous man are ordered by God. God wants to order everyone's footsteps to break through to deliverance, to restoration. Praises to your name. Praises to your name. Christ is not looking for fame. When Jesus was on earth, when he did great things, he told the disciples, don't tell him, told the people, don't tell anybody about it. But you see, the works began to speak themselves. But when he rose from the dead, after he had finished his mission, which was to die on the cross, so our sin can be cared for, he says, go and tell it on to all the world that Jesus is what? Lord, now here's where the challenge comes. Having spoken that word and say that we should go tell it on the mountain and tell to everybody that Jesus is Lord, there comes the challenge that now we that have encountered Christ, we have to talk about the greatness and the testimony of his greatness and what he has done. As we proclaim the gospel and speak to the nations about Jesus, if the word of God is not encrypted in your system, there is no faith. And when there is no faith released, you cannot experience deliverance or breakthrough. We need the word in our spirit, man, 
Because the word is what will release our deliverance and our breakthrough. You have to have the word. So the enemy don't want you to hear the word in your spirit. That's why he resists people of God from coming to his house to hear the word. That's how the enemy fights his battle. Diffuse, disarm the way people perceive God's word. So people don't perceive God's word as something that has power to deliver them. They look at the word of God as something that is useless, dry, and unable to inspire them. So if you don't have the word in your spirit, then you don't believe that you can be inspired by his word to walk in authority over the enemy. So if you don't have faith, you cannot defeat the enemy in this generation with all these temptations that you're dealing with today. There is a lot of misguiding thoughts. And one prophet uh, shared how God took him in the spirit and showed him meal, like so many demons being released from the pit going into people's bedrooms and teaching them how to do evil. Do you know Satan has unleashed a barrage of attack on the human race by releasing demonic armies to come and teach people how to do what? Evil. So when you have the word of God, then you can defeat the evil that the enemy is unleashing to attack the people of God. There is no time to waste in the world. There is no time to waste with the devil. There is no time to entertain the world. You need the mind of Christ. You need the faith that moves mountains. You need a faith that can radicalize and cause deliverance to manifest in everyone's life. Now, Satan uses that strategy to infiltrate the way people think. As a man thinketh, so shall he be. So when he controls how people think, then he's going to defeat them into making bad decisions. Like a four-year-old taking a gun and shooting his own dad. He didn't know what he was doing. He was playing with a toy, but he killed his dad. Like I showed a video earlier, people shipwrecking their destinies. That's what we're dealing with today. Everybody said, I must come to a place of knowing how to walk in authority over the enemy. Because God has given me a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. I must not give heed to Satan's pressures. Last thing I want to say before I finish. This generation must be a generation of people that seek God. The moment you stop seeking God, you fall. We must be a generation that seeks God so we can live. Seek God so you can what? Leave. You stop seeking God, you do what? You die. You stop growing, you fall. Everybody say, I must read the word so I can have faith. To please God. Number two, you must ask Him to guide you. Ask Him what? To guide you. He will guide you by His Spirit. He will guide you by what? His Spirit. The grace of God worketh in us to bring us to repentance. The grace of God worketh in us to bring us what? To repent so we can repent. And if we repent, we will be forgiven. The grace of God works in us to build in us a godly character so we can have a, health, a healthy lifestyle, spiritually fit for his service. With all the temptations and the challenges in the world, there is grace and mercy sufficient for you to overcome. For they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of what? Their testimony. You can overcome all the evil that is in this world. Stop compromising. Stop giving up on the enemy's pressure. I don't, I don't care how much pressure he puts on you. There is the ability of God in you to overcome all the pressure the enemy puts on you. So we defeat the enemy by being in the spirit, by worshiping, by walking in faith. I must have a mindset that sin is not mine. 
I must hate it, reject it, and love God. I must have faith to overcome all negative thoughts. Baba said, cast down every vain imagination. You can cast down the thoughts with your understanding. You can cast them down with the scripture. The devil tells you, you're miserable. Cast it down. Say, I got the joy of the Lord.